Hi, and welcome to the Lone Star Play podcast, where we sit, eat, chat, and repeat. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong, and we are coming to you from Austin, Texas. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for local restaurants, stores, butchers, farmers, markets, and more who are using organic, fresh, artisanal, and local sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. Various questions of, you know, what are you considering moving to Nashville or have you considered going the Christian music route or, you know, just what whatever that anybody thinks that I, I should be doing. And, um, you know, I just I have a reason why I'm here. There's a lot of reasons why I'm here, but I, I will go back to it. The fact that I just want to stay country. I want to be me. And I love pop country. I listen to it all the time. But if I go to Nashville, I'm really afraid that that's what I'm going to be turned into. And I won't do that. So that's why I've stayed here in Texas to try to prove that I can be successful and do my own thing and still be country, be true and real. And maybe someday Nashville will take notice or somebody will take notice that can get me to a national level. I don't know. But um, I just I just really want to always be authentic and real. How's your day going? Oh, it's been a busy one. Just like everything, everything back to back. I haven't had a whole lot of break today. So this is, this is a nice way to end the day, you know, with a, with a nice right relaxing conversation. So good, good. What, what are you yeah. doing? Are you like recording? Are you writing songs or just doing other stuff? <sighs> no. Um, so it's just, it's been a lot. Um, I started off the day during this time I've had to kind of shift, uh, my, my way of thinking as far as, um, making a living (laughs) cause I can't really do it with music. So I've been, uh, been door dashing and that's what I did for the first giant part of my day. And then I just recently also accepted a worship leader interim position. Um, so I had to, for this particular church, they do um, songs in English and Spanish. And so I had to record some worship songs in Spanish this afternoon. And then I went and I, yeah, yeah. So it's, and then I worked some more, I I door dashed some more. So yeah, it's just, it's nice to be able to sit down. I get it. Trust me. I get it. It's uh, yeah. Everyone's having to make, you know, you got to do what you got to do right now. That's the Texas way too. Uh, mm-hmm. To be honest with you, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's cool to to sing in Spanish. Um, do, do you have any experience doing that before, or is it new to you? Yeah, actually. So I started um, learning Spanish in high school because obviously they make you, and but I fell in love with it in high school. And so when I got to college, I wanted to double major in it, and um, it just kind of worked out where I didn't get to double major in it, but I minored in it. And, um, since college, I haven't really spoken it a whole lot, but I have sung in Spanish quite a bit. Um, at a lot of my shows down South, um, they, they love to hear Selena music. So I, I go and I I'll sing that. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm still in that world a little bit, but it was new singing worship songs in Spanish. That's something I've never done. That's awesome. Wow, that's cool. Well, that's good. It sort of keeps your chops up at the same time, right? And work yeah. out some different stuff. Um, I'm, I'm actually bilingual in Spanish. Uh, my mom's from Mexico City. Um, so oh, I grew awesome. up, I grew up speaking. Uh, honestly, if I had to learn a language like you did, I, I don't know if I could do that. I just grew up with both of them. So oh, okay. you know what I mean? It was just part of yeah. my life. So I never I tried to learn French, I remember, and, and it was the worst experience of my life. I just thought, holy cow, how do people learn new languages? I don't know. I don't oh. know how, yeah, I don't know how people do it. And I lived near France for three years, too, like in Spain. I lived in Spain for a few years, and I still did Oh, that's so cool. I still couldn't pick it up. Uh, it, it's a, I don't know what it is. Yeah, so I commend people that, um, you know, later in their life, try to learn another language. Um, again, I was just blessed to have grown up with both and it's just in me. Um, yeah. So, yeah. No, that's cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool that you sing in Spanish. Um, you know, who else I talked to that did that recently, um, uh, uh, Johnny Mathis. Okay. I don't know if you know yeah. who that is. Um, uh-huh. yeah, he, uh, yeah, he told me, yeah, I've been, I've been singing in Spanish and I thought, okay, that's wow. Okay. That's cool. He said that was something new he learned later in life. So 
right? You never know. Yeah. New audience, right? New, new things. Did you yeah, ever do anything like that on the voice? Like any sort of, uh, another language? No. Um, but it was interesting on my season, we had Shakira as one of the coaches. And yeah. so she did, she did have some contestants on her team that, um, they were kind of both pop and uh, Latina or whatever. So it's um, it was really cool to to kind of have that aspect in our season. So, um, but it's completely different speaking and singing Spanish. I mean, the yeah. phrasing is just <laughs> the phrasing is is I don't even know how to describe it. It's just very, it's not phonetic really. I mean. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a very English minded person. I think that's why I took to Spanish so easily, but, um, singing it is completely different. It's like, <laughs> I have to work at it. <laughs> so. that's, that's cool though. That's cool. You know, keeps you, keeps you on your toes, keeps you working, you know, your stuff. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's cool. I, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because, you know, when you hear your voice and, first of all you have a the most amazing angelic voice like oh my gosh Aww. like so soulful as well um i'm curious you. like you know you obviously probably listen to some latin music you know like d does that influence you at all because you don't really hear it so much but maybe it's just in the passion or i don't know um how does that influence you at all yeah i mean well like like i said i mean i've, I've been um singing in Spanish and, and learning Spanish since I was in high school. So um, right around that time is when I was starting to really get out there in my music as well. I was starting to play in open mic nights and karaoke nights and um, any crowd I could get in front of. So yeah, I mean, everything that was kind of coming at me at that time was an inspiration and it still is. I mean, you have the, like you said, the fiery passion um, of that kind of music on stage, but you've also got some of the, it's it's a very it's a very emotional form of music which yeah. i super connect with because i feel like country music is that way at least for me oh um, definitely so yeah it connects yeah no that's awesome so you say you you know when you started you're just playing at any sort of place you could go what what first initially got you to sing was is there someone in your family that sings is it how does that how did that work <laughs> I have a lot of musicians in my family, so I grew up around music, and uh, my parents both met through music back in their college days, and whenever they got married and had a family, um, they never stopped doing music, so they were always uh, singing at weddings or special events or leading music in a church somewhere, and uh, I watched that growing up, and so watching my parents do it, it made me want to get up there and and do it too. So when I was seven years old is when I got on the stage for the first time wow. at my, uh, at my home <laughs> church and yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that changed my life. I just, I, I knew that I wanted to keep doing it. So I did. Wow. That's great. So did, did you, was there a moment when I know you wanted to do it, right? We all have dreams when we're kids and I, I totally get that, but most of us don't actually go after them, to be honest with you. Um, what was there, what was the moment for you where you were like, I, I can actually do this, you know, even in your own mind, you know what I mean? Cause I, I know that feeling of putting something out to the world, but just inside of yourself was, was there a particular moment where you just thought, Oh, holy cow. Like, yeah, I do have this, like I can make this happen. You know, I don't know if it was one particular moment or if it was just a culmination of a lot of moments that I had when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Um, for one, I had a lot of really great influences in country music as far as females. I mean, there were, there was Faith Hill, there was Martina McBride and yeah. uh, Trisha Yearwood and Sarah Evans and just these power females that were beautiful and strong. And they were singing about positive messages that a, a little girl like me could listen to and sing along with. And it was appropriate. And that put a passion in me at a very early age. And then I started singing their songs at Texas Opry's around the state. And my parents would take me to be a guest on these shows all around the state of Texas. And, um, it just getting up and performing those songs made me believe that one day I could do it too. And, you know, I guess that's kind of why I keep going is because even though 
females are kind of having a hard time right now getting out there in, in country music. I just, I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't be the same person, I don't think, if I didn't have those influences growing up. And uh, maybe I want to, I want to be that for young girls today. So I don't know. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I get it. Um, you, you sort of see the the finish line, right? You, if you can't see the finish line, there's no way to get there. You know. Yeah. So if you don't see yourself singing in a big arena or on a you know on a big stage or on the Voice, right? If you don't actually imagine it, probably not going to happen. You know. Yeah. I think that's great that your parents were very supportive and helped you get out there and um, you know sort of work that that you know music muscle if you will and help you build that up and i think that's absolutely so i'm assuming you credit them with a with a <laughs> lot as well right <laughs> i i for sure do yeah they they were my first teachers they were my first encouragers and they've been that for me ever since and i'm 27 years old now so i mean yeah, I definitely they're they're my number ones. <laughs> it does it doesn't stop. I'm 40 and I still uh, my father rest in peace. Uh, but my mother, you know, even I still think about my father. You know, they're still there. No matter how old you get, it's yeah. if they had a good influence on your life, it'll never go away. Uh, in fact, it gets stronger. It gets, yeah, it does. It gets, it gets stronger as you get older because something happens. There's a pendulum swing where you start to, you know, just look to the future maybe a little bit more that at least I know in my 20s I did you're still in your 20s but in my 20s I was still very traveling free you know just I don't know just <laughs> wasn't really uh too too focused on a lot of different things just wanted to go where my creative heart took me but um that's great that you've been so focused on this one thing and you know really shot forth with this what what made you want to do the voice was there people around you telling you you have to do this there's no you know what i mean yeah um well actually when i got on the voice i was 19 almost 20 years old and wow. i i had been um auditioning for several shows before that point um because you know you're always as a as an artist you're always looking for that next step to get you to the the next thing and so that was the singing shows were super popular whenever I was, you know, coming up or whatever. And um, so I auditioned for American Idol, I auditioned for X Factor and America's Got Talent and oh, yeah. uh, several times. And I got told no. I just kept getting told no five or six different times. And so at that point, I was just kind of over it. I was I was done. I wasn't going to audition anymore. And then one day I was in the Dallas area for another gig opportunity. I was doing something else and I saw that the voice auditions were in town. They were going to be in town. So I was just like, you know what, what's another no, I'll get an experience. And even if they say no, like I'll still get something out of it. So yeah. I just went ahead and did it. I had the free time. So I went ahead and auditioned and I ended up making it this time. So <laughs> yes, I would yeah. say you did <laughs> <laughs> out of a lot of people too. You know, it's, uh, that's absolutely an amazing accomplishment. I, I had a uh, Casey James on, um, on the podcast and he was in the top three, um, yeah. of American Idol and, you know, talking to him about that experience, it's sort of the same thing. He had never even seen American Idol and just went and auditioned. Oh and had yeah. no idea even what he was getting himself into and he you know he talked about that audition just like i just thought that i had to do whatever i needed to do to show them that i cared did you feel yeah. the same way when you auditioned what was your sort of game plan or were you just like you know what i've heard all these no's i'm just laying it all out there <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah i mean uh, i i wanted to go in it um being a hundred percent myself and um you know I, i've always known that i want to be a country artist that's i've always had a passion for country music and so going into this experience i knew that <clears throat> there might be a possibility that with the coaches or with the producers or whatever they might want to change that a little bit and they might want to have me do other songs or other genres or whatever but i knew that if i had any choice in the matter i was going to make sure people knew that i was country 
because that's just very important to me. I don't, I don't want to be molded into something that I'm not. Yeah. Um, so I always tried to go in with the game plan of making something about every song, just making sure people knew that, that, that I wanted to be country and that I wanted to, and sure enough, I, I got to do mostly country songs the whole way through. Um, and it, it ended up being a really good thing for me. So, um, and I chose, uh, team Blake for that same reason. Um, I had all four coaches turn for me and it was yeah. really hard to choose, but, yeah. but I knew that if I chose Blake, I knew that that would help me stand out in people's mind minds as country. Yeah. And that was very important to me. Yeah, no, it was a great choice. And he has such a record of winning too, right? Yeah. Was that the beginning <laughs> of his winning streak? Was that back then? I can't even remember. Um, there's been so no. many seasons of it. No, he had won three or two or three previous seasons because I was on season four. Yeah. So he, he had won the majority of the seasons even back then. <laughs> yeah. He, he's yeah. always. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, that, that must have been such so great to have him, you know, to be on his team. How much of an influence is he in your performances or for everyone's performances on the team? Well, uh, you mean like in the context of the show? Or yeah, even today? exactly. In, in, in the context yeah. of the show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the context of the show, he's very influential because, I mean, everybody, he's got different advice for each contestant, obviously, because we're not all the same. We all have different strengths and weaknesses. My particular weakness that season was, I think, coming out of my shell and, and just being uh, not afraid to, to be myself because I knew that on a national platform like that, there's a lot of risk and almost certainty of being judged sure. and, um, and being just open to the cruelness of people's comments online. Yeah. And, um, I was very afraid of that because I'm a very sensitive person and that hits me really deeply when I see that or hear that. Um, so with Blake, the thing that he gave me most was learning how to just not care about that. Go out there and give your best performance. Have fun because if you're having fun, then they're going to have fun. And the performance aspect is what he really helped me with because he's an amazing entertainer. Yeah, you're right. A absolutely. And that's a big aspect, right? I mean, that's something, you know, that's a great point you bring up because as somebody who's good, to, you know, who has a, let's say, a, a talent in singing, right? There's more to it than just singing. Right. Absolutely. When you get up on a stage, it's not just getting the notes right. There is that performance aspect and keeping people engaged and, um, you know, whatever that is. So that's that's um, that's great. Do you feel like and not to throw Blake under the bus, but would you feel like you ever gave me any bad advice? We're just like, damn it, Blake, I shouldn't have done that. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, no, I don't really think any any of it was Blake's fault. I was a little bit peeved with Adam though. I will admit that I was a little peeved with Adam because like he, he fought really hard for me in the blind auditions. And then throughout the rest of the show, and I didn't, I didn't pick him for my coach. He would constantly say things like, Oh, we already know you can sing. Oh, you're, Oh, you're good. We already know that. Oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> like downplaying me. He really did. He, he downplayed me. And I think the particular night that I got eliminated. It, I mean, I know I got eliminated for a reason and it was supposed to happen and, and I'm, I'm at peace with that and everything. But I mean, I was a little bit, you know, peeved at the time sure. that he would keep saying that about me, you know? So, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you know, your whole lot, you know, your, your whole passion, your whole energy, your whole soul is in that show at the moment, you know? So I get it. Like you're, concerned about all that stuff. No, I, I totally get it. How, how was your, and this is probably a silly question. I'm sure you've gotten this um, a million times, but what has been the biggest change in your life, you know, pre-show and post-show? Well, um, I think I would probably say that um, I've lived a pretty, I don't want to say sheltered life, but um, just I mean, and I don't want to say blessed either. Cause it is a blessed life, but I haven't had a whole lot of negative things and really a whole lot of trauma, like harsh, serious trauma happened to me um, up to that point. And then um, in the last few years of my life, I've I've had a real roller coaster of things that have have shaped me and um, made me a stronger person, even though I, I wish some of it I could go back and not go through. Sure. <laughs> um, 
but you know, just things like just disappointments with um, labels falling through. And um, my grandparents both passed away within a month of each other. And um, yeah. And then, you know, our, our, our house, like we, we got robbed at our house. And so just like things like that just happened back to back within like a year and a half span for me. And I hadn't known that before the show. So I was very innocent going into the show and I don't want to say I'm not innocent now, but I just, I've, I've been through some more things and I've, I feel like I have even a bigger compassion for people through that. Wow. That's, that's awesome. So you've weathered a few storms, you know, you, yeah, (laughs) yeah, you've gone through, gone through some things. That's actually a great way to come out of it uh, with a bigger heart than you went in with it. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. <laughs> let's, let's talk about your new album. I'm, I'm looking at some of the stuff here. I listen to some of the songs. You're going to know my name. What a great, um, what a great title. Uh, Thank you. and I love, uh, what I heard the title track. I heard the, uh, front porch version, right? <laughs> so I love that. I'm not sure. I never heard that before. Um, is that something new, like a, a new distinguishing factor for a song that I never heard like live and then there's front porch version or is that something you well, created? It's basically like a fancier version of saying acoustic, but a little bit spruced up. It's not I like it. I loved it. I thought that was <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. I thought that was cool. You know, <clears throat> it's not just acoustic guitar. It's a little bit more than that, but it's not fully produced either. So. Sure. Yeah. That's a great. I mean, just such great songs. Um, they're, they're just so <laughs> great. You. Yeah. What What is the process for you? Like, do you write all these songs? Are you just sort of help with the lyrics? Or how does that work for you? Yeah. So that's something that's been different for me in this particular album. Um, in my previous albums, I have contributed to the writing process in a few of the songs. But with this particular album, I had enough time to really sit down and um and get the songs together that I wanted and, um, and made sure that I was a part of them this time. So I actually am a co-writer on all the songs on this album and I plan to keep it that way for part two. This is only part one of the album. So part two, that's going to be coming hopefully this year or next. Um, you know, that, that will also showcase more of that side of myself that, allows me to be even more vulnerable and real with people because I'm actually a, a part of, of um, creating all of it. Yeah, the, absolutely. Well, if you feel like maybe you didn't have any part in creating it, then you feel like you have to connect yourself to that song in some way, whereas opposed to if you're you know helping create the song, you're a part of it from the get-go and it's probably a yeah. lot easier to connect to the material. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, what, what about instrumentation? Are you playing the instruments? Do you plan on trying to do that? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to play instruments on, uh, like a, an actual recording. I'm not that great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I can, I can hold my own and I play acoustic gigs and stuff like that. Um, but I have some amazing band members that are just out of this world talented. And awesome. so it's kind of my joy to be able to bring other more talented people than myself yeah. and so- showcase them. <laughs> totally. They, they know what they're doing. Let them do their stuff. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, and that's a very, uh, very country music thing to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's just how country music uh, where I know a lot of, I have a lot of friends that are musicians that just work with a lot of different artists and band. And it's just, they they're probably came from rock and somehow end up in country because country is where the gigs are at, where you can go play all these different gigs and play for all these great people. And I, I love that about country music. There's a community in country music that doesn't exist in the other genres of music, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah, I is, agree. Which is really cool. Um, and being from Texas, you know, um, you know, we probably get to see that a little bit more than than some other places. Um, yeah. So, so let's see. You're in Waco, right? You you live in Waco mm-hmm. right now. What um what other parts of Texas do you enjoy getting to? Oh man, um, I mean I've been a little bit all over. Um, I've I've been, you know, north, south, east, west, all of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think I think one of my favorite places to play is down in South Padre. Um, in the you know 
southern region. It's just really nice to go down there because there's a little place that uh, we like to play. And this last time I got to bring my band and um, we kind of turned it into a little vacation. So it's, it's like I get to do what I love. I get to do music, but I also get to take three or four days off and just enjoy being still. And yeah. <laughs> that's so rare for me. So one of my favorite places to play is definitely South Padre. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great, um, great part of Texas. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What, um, so you say you have new music, um, or the second part of this, this new music coming out, hope maybe this year or next year, obviously, I'm sure the pandemic has um, affected that. Is that the reason? Or do you have some stuff recorded for that already or songs written or you're still, how's that working? To be honest with you, I have all the songs ready and uh, in the in the terminal waiting to be recorded and waiting to go into that process of it. Um, but yes, the, the pandemic is definitely a factor because now even if I wanted to get in the studio and even if I had, you know, the whole budget to be able to do that, we can't. Um, yeah. But the bigger problem is the finances. Um, it's just very expensive to go in the studio. And I, uh, that was, that was one of the things that in order to be able to put out part one, I had to, um, make a lot of sacrifices to, um, to, to be able to do that. So, um, it, that's why part two is a little bit slower in the coming because I just, I got to recover yeah, <laughs> and, totally. uh, and, and get ready for that next part. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. So you're probably releasing this on your own, right? Um, that seems mm -hmm. to be that seems to be the new thing with artists. Um, I, gosh, it seems like definitely more than half the artists I talk to. That's what they do. Everybody releases yeah. it on, on their own. Do you think that's? I mean, that must be the future, right? Is the internet help with that? Um, what What do you think allows you to make that happen? Well, I have some really great fans that come to my shows and buy my merch <laughs> and uh, all of that good stuff that helps yeah. keep me going. Sure. Um, and so that's that's a huge part of it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, just um, being able to do it independently is is a, a big factor of that. Is also just being here in Texas. I mean, if I was anywhere else in the nation, it would be a lot harder because here in Texas, we're just so, um, surrounded by places to play and opportunities. And we're very blessed to have that. And that's why we have our own little music scene here. I say little and it's not little, it's huge. Um, but it, it, that's what allows us to be able to be independent down here and do things our own way. And I think that's super cool. And, and that's why I've wanted to stay here. Wow. That's great. That's awesome. Well, look, I know Texas loves that, right? Um, definitely <laughs> people, the big thing is right. People move to Nashville. That seems to be, um, the big thing. Um, you know, you get sort of big in country and you move to Nashville, which I get, there's a lot of great songwriters and musicians. Um, and right. I get that. Have you, has there been, you know, pressure on you to, to maybe make that sort of same move? Oh yeah. Um, everybody always asks me, you know, various questions of, you know, what are you considering moving to Nashville or have you considered going the Christian music route or, you know, just what, whatever that anybody thinks that I, I should be doing. And, um, you know, I just, I have a reason why I'm here. There's a lot of reasons why I'm here, but I, I, we'll go back to it. The fact that I just want to stay country. I want to be me. And I love pop country. I listen to it all the time. But if I go to Nashville, I'm really afraid that that's what I'm going to be turned into. And I won't do that. So that's why I've stayed here in Texas to try to prove that I can be successful and do my own thing and still be country, be true and real. And maybe someday Nashville will take notice or somebody will take notice that can get me to a national level. I don't know. But um, I just I just really want to always be authentic and real. And um, the only way I'll ever move or go a different route is if I feel like I'm not being real in the route that I'm in. Yeah. Do you think fans can catch on to that if you're real or not? Right. Do they do, do you think they 
they can see that? I think they can. I mean, I'm pretty active, especially on my social media. And the days that I don't post or if I don't post for like a week at a time, I try to post something every single day. But if I, if I don't, they know that something's going on with me. Wow. <laughs> um, that's, that's when, if I'm not, you know, constantly just, just saying, Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Or this is what I'm doing today. And, and, you know, just constantly engaging with them and, um, they, they know that, that something serious is going on with me. So I think people can tell when you're not yourself or when something's going on. Yeah. I mean, me personally, as a fan of artists, um, I always love somebody who's authentic and real because it's endearing. It's, yes. uh, you know, when somebody becomes vulnerable and they open themselves up, um, there's just something very special about that. And, um, you know, I respect it and it's something that attracts me to an artist if they are real and engaging. Um, even if there's some mistakes, I don't care about that. That's character to me. But if you try to, like you were saying earlier, if you try to be something you're not or be pushed into a box that you're not, I really think fans can see that a mile away and reject yeah. it almost, you know, like then it makes you really, you know, it puts you off as opposed to just, no, I don't really, that's not for me. It's even yeah. more than that's not for me. That's, oh, that's, you know, that puts you off even. So I think that's better to be yourself and because you're going to get your real fans. Right. Yeah. You don't ne you never have to pretend for the people that care about you. You can just be yourself and they love you for that. And that's that's really the long term uh, goal. And you'll just build that up over time and there'll be yeah. real fans, you know, who really, yeah. truly love you. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's God, that's such a great way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah. So this new music, you said I got them all. You got them all ready to go. Do you think because. Um, you know, I have talked to other songwriters that like sometimes the songs that they're sort of have just written or are in the moment of right. They're the ones they're most excited about. Right. Do you mm -hmm. think if time passes, you'll be like it eh, or more things happen to you? You think that might change that some of those songs might actually get shelved and you might have some new stuff? Um, That's a possibility. I mean, yeah. you don't want to put yourself in a corner of saying you're not going to write a better song. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, that's it. This you, is the best. <laughs> I'm done. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's, if there's an opportunity to keep writing and that's what I am doing, I'm doing a lot of that right now. Um, just trying to, to keep that part of myself going and, uh, the artistic part of myself, um, active and, you know, that's, that's your goal is always to write a, a better song than you did the last time. So there's absolutely a possibility that better things could come out of this time. And, um, you know, I, I kind of hope that, that it happens, you know, cause it, it, it's okay if, if I have too many good songs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to write with the people that I do. And I've learned a lot, um, just by listening and being in the presence of other great writers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's when you're around people that do it right, there's just things you never thought about before, you know, yeah. and it, it takes a song in a different way, right? Whether it be a bridge or, you know, the lead up into the chorus, um, some, something can can make the song special. It's all those little details of songs that actually make it uh, make it so special. And it probably changes too, right? When you have the initial idea to what then actually comes out produced, it's probably not the same. Um, right. Or is that journey usually the same? Like, does the song come out the same as you thought? Basically, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, no, it, it rarely ever does unless the song just lends itself to staying acoustic. I mean, like just a vocal and a guitar or a vocal and a piano or something like that. Those cases, it does stay pretty much the same, but the studio is where you get to really have some fun and add in some creativity and some things that are going to spark the ear of your listener. So um, I look forward to that part of the process in watching a song transform from baby to grown adult and uh it's it's just really cool because it can really go anywhere you want it to 
that's the that can be the frustrating part though right is it there's just like endless options you could add this take away this you know do we add more harmonies do we add another backing vocal do we you know does it need more slide guitar right like it's yeah. like dude let's bring the guitar up right you always got that the guitarist in the room like i think my guitar should go up just a little bit more right? i'm not sure <laughs> that solo's not uh it's not long enough let's let's go into the bar um would you ever would you ever think about writing for other artists yeah um now i've written with several other songwriters that um, I mean, we, we start out a lot of times writing for me, but sometimes it doesn't always end that way. Um, like you just said, I mean, you can start out with an idea and it turns into something totally different by the end. Um, so I have absolutely written songs with other artists in mind or even guy artists. Like that's the weirdest thing for me is to get out <laughs> of my girl head yeah. and try to write what a guy would say. <laughs> um, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, that definitely has happened. And anytime you get out of your comfort zone like that, it just makes you better. So I'm totally open to all of that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I think that that's something that's also another thing that I love about country music is that you'll find, you know, you'll hear this song. And it's like, oh, so and so wrote it. And this person wrote it. You're like, oh, wow, that's like it's all over the place and that's probably why people. Yeah, now that I'm saying that, that's probably why people do go to Nashville, because there's just such a you know, I guess camaraderie of that, of people just writing all this different stuff. But that's more if you're trying to go maybe be a songwriter, right? Like yeah. that would be a good place to go um, for for that sense. But yeah, I, I totally see that. Um, yeah, that's got to be interesting to definitely sort of get in the mindset of some dude, right? Just like, how am I going <laughs> to... Yeah. What am I going to talk about? Fishing poles and pizza. Like, this is going to be <laughs> the lamest song ever, right? Like, it's like... <laughs> I mean, guys are deeper than that. I we think. can be, I so. guess, sometimes. <laughs> We're faking it most of the time, I promise. Um, <laughs> that's I awesome. love it. So you said you do, um, you know, worship music, and you've even said that um, you, meant, you made a comment earlier that some people have maybe even pushed you into doing uh, Christian music, you know, and instead you've chosen, I guess, is the term secular music, if, if that's the term. Um, what 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 does keep you in that lane and what keeps you or can you do both you know can can there be the switch foot or was that the name of the band i think it was called switch foot or something like that um, yeah i don't know yeah i mean i i i've just always felt even from the first time i got on stage i i felt this calling my faith is really important to me first of all um so i've always tried to be really just in tune with what I feel like the spirit is telling me. And I've always felt called to reach the unreached and, um, be a light in a dark world and, and spread that, that love and that light. And the thing about Christian music is it's, it's wonderful and we need it. And I would be so honored to be a part of that. It's just that I've, I've felt a pull to be a Christian in a not necessarily Christian world um, and be, be an influence, I guess. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I want that kind of audience. I want to touch people and move people emotionally and um, to show them that there's, there's so much more than, than just what we have here, you know? Um, but I don't want to do it in, in a way that would turn them off or cause some people they they won't listen to Christian music because they're, they're just, they're totally against it. So I would never reach those people if I went Christian. Sure. Um, so that, that's kind of a long way to explain it. But, um, and, and the fact that I just love country music, that's why I've felt led that way. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, you've th obviously thought about it and you have a reason behind it. So I totally respect that. Um, I think that's great. And I think anyone who told you that and you gave them that answer, they should accept that because that's a great answer, um, to be honest with you. you. You're doing what you feel, where you feel God is taking you yeah. down the path, right? So yeah, I, I totally respect that. Um, no, that's awesome. What denomination do you um, practice? <laughs> uh, well, I've grown up Baptist. Um, but our church is sense. sort of, 
yeah, I mean, I'm here in the South, you know, yeah. but, um, but we're real, like, we're not super traditional Southern Baptists, you know, we're, uh, <laughs> we're more, we're more riding the line of Baptist and non-denom, um, because that's what our service, uh, it's, it's very mixed. Like we have traditional stuff, but we also have contemporary. So, um, I, I mean, yes, I, I, Baptist for sure, but and I went to Baylor University too in college, and it's a yeah. it's a Baptist university. So. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's been many years, but I, I used to go to church. Um, I, gosh, I hope I don't get struck down by lightning here. Um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's been many years. Uh, but I used to go to a Baptist church too in Euless. Shout out to First Baptist Euless. Uh, nice. Many years. I used to lead worship myself. I can't believe it. Just for a couple what? years to like college kids. Um, you know, yeah. I was, I was college age too. So I don't know what I was doing. It was like, I'm the wrong guy to be doing this guys. I kept telling them y'all need to find somebody else. This is not, <laughs> I am the, but first of all, I'm horrible at, at the guitar here. And you all gave me a guitar, um, you know, like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, great, great memories. Um, I'm still friends. I'm still good friends with so many people I know from that church still to this yeah. day. Um, that was 20 years ago. I can't even, wow, can't even believe saying that out loud 20 years ago. Holy <laughs> cow. God, I feel old all of a sudden. Uh, that that just came that just came out of nowhere. Um, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I feel that too. It's all good. Yeah. It, it You know, it comes on you fast. I'll tell you that. I, I, I was 27, I feel like, yesterday. Like, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah. So... Gosh, so let's talk a little bit, yeah, about the album. Like, what's been sort of the reception? Do you have any other things that you're trying to do for it um, while it's out? I know you can't play shows, right? So are there any you live streaming? What What is sort of the the reach, I guess, you're trying to do right now or the promotion or wh whatever? I don't know the right term there. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I'm doing Facebook live streams, and I'm trying to get, um, like, house concerts and backyard concerts and zoom concerts set up um so that's kind of what i'm filling in the time with and then um i'm also about to release another single to texas radio from the from that record so i've released uh three already i've released uh the finer things and country music won't let me and take me fishing and yeah, so song. the next one yeah so the next one that i'm releasing is coming out on july 31st Friday, July 31st, and it's coming out. It's going to be Rhythm of You. That is the next single to Texas Radio. And all of my previous singles have gotten in the top 20 of the charts. So I think it's being received well. Um, yes. I still haven't I still haven't broken top 10. I haven't broken, uh, I haven't gotten a number one yet, but um, hopefully that's in the future, especially with this song. Yeah, but if every song you're putting out is top 20, right? Like, that's amazing. That's Thank you. That's amazing. I'm hoping so. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that is. I mean, think about how many artists are putting in songs out there and that's not happening, right? There, are, <laughs> That's not happening. So, no, that's that's great. Um, so Rhythm of You, let's um, we'll we'll kind of, you know, work our way out out of this uh, interview with that song. So, like, let's talk a little sure. bit about that about that song, Rhythm of You. I love the name. Um, yeah. What what's sort of the inspiration? behind that song this particular song is i like to think of it as my easygoing um really just relaxed laid back but also kind of sexy and sultry type song um you know i i got in the room that day riding with paul sykes and um adam wheeler and they're two of my favorite people to write with because they're just so they're so cool and just they're very laid back and I'm, I'm very high. Well, I'm not high strung, but I'm very like <laughs> type A, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they kind of bring me down to, to where I need to be. And, uh, and it's great. I love it. And, um, that particular day, we just wanted to write something that felt good. We, the words were definitely important, but we wanted something to groove and we wanted it to speak to the soul on a, on a more, audible level i guess uh <laughs> just from the music itself and um and just be something that you can lay back and relax to so that was the main thought in coming up with this one and 
And then we just kind of, we wanted to put that sexiness and that sultriness in there um, without going over the line. So that's another thing that's really important to me is because I have a, an audience of a lot of families and young people. Um, you know, I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to be too promiscuous or anything like that, but I'm also a woman. I'm also a 27 year old woman and I want to be real and authentic. So, um, I'm trying to, to be appropriate. And, um, and so all of that went into this particular song and, um, I'm just really excited to see what, what people, what their reactions are to it. Oh, I'm sure they're gonna, you know, love it. Right. You got great. It's, it's, you got great fans. So, um, how do you think they are great? Um, what, what do you think about, Okay, this this will be the final thing I know. And I'm sorry, I just have to know this um, before we no, go. Okay. Like, I, I'm I'm curious because I'm asking all the musicians, like, how do you, how do you see the music industry, m- you know, moving forward? Like, in the context of playing live, right? Like music venues and uh, because bars and right the restaurant, these places that a lot of musicians play are having trouble and and they're closing. You know, there's some businesses closing, and I'm just curious you know, what, what you think about it? Are you even trying to plan shows ahead of time? Are you trying to do house concerts and this, but is there stuff you're trying to plan ahead of time? Um, yeah. I don't, take us out here. This is all you. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely putting shows on the books and whether or not they get postponed or canceled, we're just going to leave that in God's hands. And I hope that it will get back to normal. Um, thank goodness for me, I'm not a huge arena level artist yet. So I think those are the, the artists that are going to suffer the most because I don't think arena concerts are going to come back for a very long time. Um, possibly another year or two. Uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope we can figure something out before then. But as far as me, as far as my career goes, I think that hopefully with people being careful and uh, being responsible with everything that we're supposed to be doing right now, I think that we can get back to safely congregating in smaller numbers. And I think it can actually be beneficial for artists like me because we can relate with our crowds better and we can have more of a one-on-one feel. So I choose to have a positive outlook on it and Love that. Uh, Love that. because there's, there's no other way to be, honestly, if you get, you, you could get so wrapped up in the negatives and you could just spiral downhill every single day. And I just, I don't want to live like that. So I'm going to be positive. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, do you think you'll keep doing the, the live streams, even if things, you know, let's say it gets right back to normal, right? It's everything's back to how, what do you think you'll still keep doing that? I think we should. Yeah. I mean, especially because during this time, social media has been keeping us afloat and keeping our faces out there. So I think it would be smart to keep doing what we were doing. Even, even if we go out and we play more live, I think that we can't forget about our, our social media um, audience and reaching new people that way, because you're always going to do that. You're always going to get somebody new with every new live that you go out there with. So, um, yeah, I, I think I could see us continuing that. Yeah. Just sort of fold it into everything else you're doing, you know, can become another revenue stream, uh, if you will. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Um, all right, Holly. Well, look, I've had, this has been absolutely amazing and I'm so glad we got to do this again. Um, thank you so much, uh, for, you know, rescheduling and making this happen. I apologize, uh, that that didn't happen before. So I'm just really glad uh, that you were able to make time again and, and we could do this. Yeah. Thank you for being flexible too. I, I'm sorry about all that that happened, but now we got good internet Please. and it seems to be working. So it's amazing. <laughs> Honestly, your image is good. like, I'm blown away by it to be frank with you. It's like perfect. Uh, t- yeah. It's, good. Perfect. it's your brother's uh, house, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got pretty fast internet here. Tell so him, tell him thank you from, uh, I will. <laughs> from PSA in Austin. Uh, I appreciate it uh, for sure. Um, Holly, why don't you let everyone know how they can one, get your album and just, you know, how, how they can connect with you, um, on social media. Sure. So on social media, like I said, I'm really active and I love hearing from folks. So you can find me anywhere on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. Um, just either search Holly Tucker and you'll find me 
or you can search my handle, which is at Holly T Music. And be careful to get the real accounts um, because there are some fakes out there. So always find my account with the blue verified check mark next to it. And um, if you would like to go and find out more about merchandise and uh, buying CDs or T-shirts or anything like that, you can go on my website at hollytucker.com. Awesome. Wow. That's how you know you've made it when people create fake accounts, right? Is that it? <laughs> is that? <laughs> it's just irritating. I don't, I don't even know if it's that. It's just irritating. <laughs> I can imagine. I would be livid. Like, it's like, you yeah. don't mess with a Texan like that. Are you kidding me? That's like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I would be livid. Uh, wow. Uh, well, excellent. Thank you so much, Holly. Um, again, this has been an absolute blast. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, speaking to you. I wish you the, the absolute best. Um, with this new music and everything you got going and hopefully this all clears up you're able to get back out on the road and and do what you love thank so. you so much patrick i really appreciate you guys for having me and i hope we get to do this again soon absolutely <laughs> of course of course holly well enjoy the rest of your evening get some rest you've had a long day and uh yeah we'll talk soon all right bye All right, I really hope you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email the podcast at patrick at texasrealfood.com. And don't forget, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you know, all the different places you can get podcasts, you'll you'll find us on there. Or you can just go to our website, go to the Lone Star Plate. Dot com. And you can check us out on YouTube if you want to watch it. You know, we video these, now, you know, on a little webcam here and go to the Texas Real Food YouTube channel and you can find it there. Make sure to follow uh, Texas Real Food as well on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe. Um, and if you, you know, are so inclined, please leave us a review anywhere you can. You know, follow us on Spotify or leave a review on Apple Podcast. Uh, that would really help us out. Thanks again for listening. Really do appreciate it. Um, without you guys, we will, you know, what's the point of doing this? So if you have any suggestions on how we can make the show better, please let us know. Thanks again. Be safe out there. Wash your hands.